And thank you for coming, especially after lunch. My name is Jeff Littlejohn. I know many of you are many of you are in the history department. Thank you for coming. Um, this presentation is going to be about project-based learning, and it's going to be largely about the experience I've had in two courses teaching online. And what I wanted to do is give you some indication of some experiences I've had in developing projects. I didn't call it problem-based learning because a lot of um, it, it's inspired by problem-based learning, but everything is not uh, formatted in the, in the nature of a problem. So they're, they're more about projects. And what I mean by that is I want the students to be able to engage together in rigorous creative assignments that they do in a collaborative nature, that they have some say in how they're developed, that they choose many of the sources that they will use, that they uh, develop these in a way that everything they develop is available online to the general public without a login. Because um, I'm a believer in the idea that students enjoy creating things for others to see, sharing them and commenting on them. That's what they do on Facebook, that's what many of us do, and I think that's very important in an online format. I also think that it builds some 21st century skills in the sense that there, there are digital skills that they will use, but there are also critical thinking skills, creativity, communication. Although they don't like working in groups, pretty much, as uh, you all know, everything we do revolves around group work. And I thought I'd introduce uh, this with um, what I've done, and I, I've stolen this shamelessly from our assistant dean here, Terry Billhartz. Um, but what I do now to introduce the class to a project. And this is just what we do immediately when they enroll in the online class um, to get them to work together, to get them to uh, think about history and what it is. And so we're, we're going to talk about the duel briefly. This is the duel between Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton. And as they're doing this, what the learning objectives of this individual project from my point of view is a little bit different from what I hope they get out of it. What I'm hoping they get out of it is they like it, they enjoy it, and they get to meet several other people in the class and have some interactivity and collaboration. So I want them to study history by engaging in the craft of history. I want them to be able to distinguish between primary and secondary sources, learn some basic content about Burr, Hamilton, and the revolutionary generation, think critically about weighing evidence, and I want them to make an argument. Um, and so that's the, the basic idea. And how this works is I have a website. It provides basic information on the background of the duel. This is the most famous duel in American history between Aaron Burr, who was the sitting vice president, and Alexander Hamilton, who was the leader of the Federalist Party and formerly Secretary of the Treasury. And so th this is a duel in which Hamilton is killed. And so what I ask them to do is use a software called VoiceThread. And let me show you the way this works. What I do is I make a PowerPoint on the duel. I post it on VoiceThread very easily. VoiceThread is totally free. So what this uh, software allows you to do, if it works here in a moment, is post your PowerPoint. You can comment on your slides. The students register for free, and then they can comment on it. So in this case, uh, what this PowerPoint slide is, it's a slide about the duel, and I'm asking them to use their information from the primary sources to assess the validity of this picture, which is posted on the website for Wikipedia as the picture illustrating the duel. Okay, if you know anything about the duel, you know that duels in the um, 18th and early 19th century were held in secret. They were literally illegal. And the idea here is that the duel took place across the Hudson River, across from Manhattan. It involved Hamilton, Burr, their two seconds, and one doctor. So there were five people. They arrived at the duel site by boat. Okay, the doctor was not allowed to see the duel. That means there were four people present. In this picture, 
you've got a carriage in the background, you've got one, two, three, four, five, you've got eight people involved. And what I'm asking the students to do is use their um, information from the primary sources to comment on the validity of this image. I don't know why, I'm sorry, I don't know why we're not getting any, let me see. You can see they can comment by either uh, text, typing it in, or they can they can give their audio commentary. So I don't know why, why my audio is not working. It was just a moment ago. But, um, so they can comment back and forth to each other. It's interactive. It's somewhat collaborative. And they can also meet someone um, through this process. So that's an introductory uh, project that I've used, VoiceThread. As I say, it's a wonderful software uh, program that you can get for free online. You can post your PowerPoints, you can do voiceovers, and then they can comment on what you've done. Also, if you make it public, anybody on the internet can comment as well. Now, the, the bulk of my presentation, though, I'd like to talk about uh, another class I taught, which is on September 11th recently, and the type of projects the students did in this class. Um, and one of, my, one of the points of frustration I have as an online teacher is everything is about the written word, everything is about creating a paper, sending it in, grading it, or doing a discussion board, and they comment back and forth. And my experience has been students aren't very good on discussion boards, and they don't like to talk uh, one to the other, uh, and they, they rarely make meaningful contributions. Um, not always, but rarely. And so what I'm trying to do in developing projects is create assignments that they can uh, collaborate on, that they can do individual work, that they think it's creative, and that they can learn in that manner rather than simply doing a paper. So what I did in this 9-11 class is divide it into three sections. One I called the origins of terror. The second I called we have some planes. And the third, the dire consequences of 9-11. And in each section, they had multiple assignments or projects to do, and each project required a different form of technology. So what I wanted them to do is study history again by engaging in the craft of history. I want them to be able to distinguish between primary and secondary uh, sources. I want them to learn the basic causes and consequences of 9-11 think critically, weigh evidence, make arguments, and collaborate. So the, the first major assignment that I, I think this was probably my favorite and the most successful, which was the timeline. So I asked them to create a timeline of Islamic terrorism from uh, 1979 in the Iranian hostage crisis to the bombing of the coal in 2000. And I asked them to use a website called timelines.com in which uh, it's free again uh, you sign up and you can create uh, an interactive timeline. I like the elegance of this website uh, you can see here the the events that they created this is a decent one to show you here at the top um, basically I like timelines.com because you can add text you add citations where you got your content, you can add images, and you can add video from YouTube or other sources, and a map. So it's got all of those things. Text, image, citation, video, map. Okay, on each item. Okay, so as I said, some of them are better than others. Um, but that's the nature of it. They did this collaboratively, and I graded this with a grading rubric. There were a number of entries that each student had to do. They had to post 10 to 15 entries. The written content had to be original, meaning they didn't copy and paste it from YouTube. They had to add images, maps, and video to it, and this was just an example of some of the items that they chose. Now, I'm going to do this again in a couple of weeks, and I'm not going to use timelines.com again because uh, I found another website that I like a little bit better called dipity.com, D-I-P-I-T-Y.com. I think it's not as elegant in the presentation as Timelines, 
but it's easier to use. Dipity.com, D-I-P-I-T-Y.com. And I think timelines are great because it enables them to create something uh, that beyond just a written paper. Okay, second thing we did is we created a digital video. So what they had to do was present a analysis of what happened on September 11th, 2001. They had to develop this collaboratively in a group of five or four. They had to share the script in Google Docs. They had to provide a narrative arc um, telling the story and provide citations with photographs, maps, archival clips. And I gave them this website, Digital Storytelling at the U of H, as their resource. And Digital Storytelling provides uh, background on uh, how to develop these projects, how to grade them, uh, it gives sample um, illustrations. So it's a great website. And then they had to post their videos to YouTube. So let's see if... This is one. Uh, I presented this one as a problem. So you're called in by the president. The night of September 11th, it's midnight. He says, I need to know exactly what happened from as many sources as you have. And I need it, of course, by tomorrow morning when I wake up or whatever it was. And so then they set about, and I gave them a very short time limit on the creation of these projects as well. So, uh, but this resource, digitalstorytelling.com, is really great if you want to use that method in your classroom because they've already done a lot of the work for you. The third assignment was to develop a wiki, and I used blogs and wikis. The wiki was to be on the process going from 9-11 to uh, the Iraq War, and how did the Iraq War become the primary mission of the United States in the war on terror, who advocated the war, who opposed it, what was the Bush doctrine, and so this one was more heavily written than the other uh, projects, but it also incorporated creativity, collaboration, and illustration using photographs, videos, and other things that could be posted. And I used the uh, blog software uh, I mean, I use the wiki software that comes with Blackboard that we were um, using at the time called Learning Tools, and I believe we're still using that through Blackboard. But it was relatively easy, and again, they had to provide uh, citations for that. Probably their favorite assignment was an assignment on the Abu Ghraib prison scandal. Uh, because it was very personal and obviously involved a lot of soul-searching about the United States' war on terror and the way things had gone in the Iraq war. So what I did is I had them read Seymour Hersh's original article that came out on the Abu Ghraib prison scandal, and then they watched the HBO documentary called The Ghost of Abu Ghraib. And then I watched that film very closely and created a list of 14 questions that went along with the film. And then they developed their own blog using Blogspot. This was, again, this may have also been their favorite because this was the one assignment that they did individually. So, and... Well, they did not appreciate to the degree that some of the other presenters have today suggested the group work. I found a lot of resistance to the group work, especially developing the script uh, for the digital video on September 11th. They really, um, they really hesitated at that, and many of them suggested that they thought they had done the bulk of the work or you know how it goes with, uh, with group work. So this one was individual. They did it on their own. They answered the questions and they gave very private, a personal 
uh, feelings about what had happened at Abu Ghraib that I thought really revealed that they connected with the assignment in a way they may not have with the other ones. And then finally, the last assignment, they used mybrainshark.com, which allows you to post, again, a PowerPoint and lecture over it slide by slide. So I asked them to do an analysis of U.S. military strategy from 2004 to the present using uh, their textbook that uh, they had in the course, as well as images and materials, videos from online. And My Brain Shark works really smoothly. It's free. It allows you to upload PowerPoint presentations and then comment on those presentations yourself using either a cell phone, if they don't have a good microphone, or a microphone. And again, it's free. I can try to show you that. So, uh, and each of these comes with, you know, 15 or 20 slides as they talk about the development of the strategy uh, that the U.S. pursued. So, what I learned from doing these project-based learning, and I did learn some things, uh, one, I will not use the variety of technology that I used last time. There were six assignments and each assignment used a different technology, and that was uh, wrong-headed on my part because each time they did this, they had to learn a new technology. Some of them became very frustrated. This wasn't completely online course. Second thing I learned was use the resources that are already out there. Most of these websites that are free, like VoiceThread or My Brain Shark or whatever it may be, people have already posted videos on YouTube of how to use them. And so what I would do in my directions, which had to be very detailed and meticulous, was I would also make a link. Here's a video on how to do this. Watch it, and if you have questions, then you can, you can ask me. Third, a grading rubric will be a great uh, help, both because the students will know what you want. They'll know how many slides you want. They'll know what content. They'll know how, uh, how you're going to grade the project. They'll know uh, what the citations are supposed to look like, etc. And if we post that beforehand, it's even better. Now, in Blackboard, that's going to be really a great addition to Blackboard this, this coming year is the uh, rubric tool they have. Um, and finally, keep the focus on the content. And again, that was my fault. I overestimated or overemphasized the technology too great a variety. This time I'll probably choose three and they'll get to repeat each one. Um, but I would like to see the co our college, College of Humanities and Social Sciences and also Delta, create a, you know, create a repository, a, a set of links where we list what some of these great websites are that are free, that we can sign up for, that do the types of things we're looking for because from my point of view, the LMSs don't do much. Right? I mean, they, they, they facilitate. They act as a grade book, a uh, drop box, they do some video, but as far as the students creating projects, there's not much there, at least right now. And so I would like to say a repository where we learn from each other about what, what, uh, what is out there and available. And finally, use Google Docs and Skype, those great free programs to, uh, to communicate with the students as they develop their project. So I'd be happy to take any questions or hear your ideas about some of these other websites because I'm constantly on the lookout for those uh, to, to make my own classes better. Thank you. I'm going to turn this off. Well, none of these are apps. Uh, you know, all of them are available as free, uh, free websites. So the three I've used are tikitaki.com, 
which I think is the most labor intensive of the three. It's also the most elegant look. I mean, the ultimate result looks the best, but as far as a student learning and developing a timeline in 14 days, which was my timeline for this assignment, it, it was not possible. Then there's Dippity, which uh, is very good. I developed my own timeline yesterday on that for a different project, and it's very easy to use. And then timelines.com, which I've used in the past. All of them are websites that you can use and anybody can access. And everything you create on there will be open to the public. Yes. It was, I had both, both uh, reactions. I had probably the best evaluation I have ever had from a student who basically said, everyone should have to take this class who's going into teaching. And, you know, it just, it, it shows you the variety of different assignments and, and it really involves the students. And I think it meets up with what some of the early presenters were talking about with students engaging new technology, acting collaboratively, designing their own projects, and the professor really assisting and, and de, uh, laying a groundwork and a rubric that students should follow, but the students do the work. And so I had those students. I also had students who, you know, they couldn't, that, that just wasn't what they wanted. And they wanted to read a book and turn in a three-page book review. And so I was very upfront in the introduction that I made to the course and in the syllabus that that was not what this course was about. It was fully online. It was six projects. Uh, the projects would be de developed with technology and you probably were not going to be familiar with the technology. So there was going to be a lot of a, a steep learning curve on some of them. And so I got a, both responses. The one response that I did get universally was use fewer technologies and less group work. Okay, they hated the group work. And um, so the problem with that is then you have a lot more grading to do. Instead of eight projects to grade six times, you now have, I have 34 people enrolled in this class in the fall. Well, I think later in the course, that may have been true, especially we read Thomas, book, uh, Thomas Ricks's book, Fiasco, about the process of the Iraq War. And I think you could have gotten that kind of... But, but with Lawrence Wright's book, The Looming Tower, that's the book they used as the basis for the timeline and so forth. I think it was... I mean, there were... I had some really excellent students in there, and then I had some, just frankly, students who didn't read the book. And so, you know, the excellent students would became very frustrated. I'm doing all the work, and I tried to use Google Docs to mitigate that so that I could see what each person had done. And, you know, it was, a, as you were saying a moment ago, you know, in your session a moment ago, um, the, you could see people went into Google Docs and added the stuff, you know, two hours before it was due, you know, and that was just, yes, ma'am. Yes, I did a peer, uh, I, what I use is I use Google Docs to make a peer evaluation form. And then they would evaluate their peers, and generally speaking, they were not hesitant to be brutal uh, if they didn't think somebody had done the work. And uh, in fact, they would email me and Skype me, you know, uh, about this as the, as the projects went on. Um, and your other question was about the rubrics. Uh, the rubrics were... This was the first time I taught this course. So the rubrics were not as advanced as they are going into this time because I knew less what to expect. But this time, yes, they're much more, 
I mean, the, the directions are meticulous, but this time the, 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 the rubrics are much more involved. Specifically, how many slides are you going to have to have in this presentation? What is the content? How many sources are you going to have to cite? You know, and, and that sort of thing. Um, you know, also, you know, basic things you would have on a grading a paper kind of, kind of rubric. So you're telling them how many slides instead of them deciding? Yes, yes. I mean, I, the project is original and creative within a defined parameter uh, because I don't want to watch a movie that's an hour long. And some of them may, I mean, so I'm setting certain limits. This is what I want you to design. Now you design it any way you like is kind of, I guess, what I did. Anything else? Any other websites you all know that uh, allow students to creatively design material online that's available to the general public that you've had success with that we could share with other people? Uh, it's hard, you know, that's a good question, right? Because you're, when you're working in group work, that also comes up, right? Um, I feel like the students who did very well in the course really learned the material and really gravitated to it in a way that they would not have otherwise. And I also feel like that once we get down into that C and D range, there may have been students who got better grades than they probably deserved, uh, who learned less, knew less. I mean, you know, but that was a risk I was willing to take. And also, I mean, in online ed, I, w I didn't want to have a class on September 11th using a couple essays and multiple choice questions, which I felt like was the alternative. Um, that's just, that wasn't the type of class I wanted to, to run, so. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful, you know, resource, I think. And what I wanted to also see is like a, I want to do a character analysis, not, you know, like a kind of a, a, a website that would be like a Wikipedia entry on a person, like a biographical, but that it would have other characteristics to it, where it might show a map of where these people had gone to school and held jobs and what they had done and, uh, but I haven't been able to find that yet because I would like to do that for s several of the biographies of the people in this book. Right, okay, yeah. All right, well, thank you all very much.